we have a special message for you from the Rebel Base. It's that uh, you're here in the Rebel Base. What? Hey! Welcome. My name is O Katrina. And I'm Sarah the Rebel. Not as lame as that intro. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was caught off guard. <laughs> I'm constantly caught off guard. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, now I need to work on getting the screen and making sure it goes away so we're cool. normal color. I just tweeted that this happened. Technology. Hello, Arbre. Hello, Intermythius. Hello, Hello. Systems. Hello, Katrina's deity. Thank you all for tuning in. Hi, Dad. <laughs> um, so we asked you all on Twitter to help us come up with um, our spooky names for Halloween. You all did a horrible job. Bless horrible. your heart. I, I love you guys, but it was bad. Uh, so we made up our own. And mm-hmm. what is what is your spooky name? Skeletrina Deadness. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Sarah the Devil. Yay! Uh, our marketing lady at Geek and Sundry actually came up with it because she's oh, much wow. better at puns than I am. Um, That's why she hired me because I'm just as the good. The funniest. She, yeah. she was really all about you, I remember. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. welcome if you are a first time viewer. This is Rebel Base Podcast, the podcast where two crazy cat lady feminists talk about gaming and comics and anything else geeky we so desire. Oh my. This is episode nine and our main topic for the night is uh, geeky merchandise. Yes. And so it's going to be kind of a broad topic based on some things that were happening in the news. Speaking of news, this is the way... Ah! Wow! Oh, Bam! Dude, get out of here! Okay. There we go. Hey! Normal <laughs> colors. We're, we are back to real life. Back to reality. Yes. Back to it's the here and now. It's not a secret that now. you're here anymore. Show me how to decide what you want from me. Okay, sorry. Anyway, um, so the way this podcast works is first we talk about um, what's in the news, what's going on in the geeky world uh, that might actually pop up on somebody's uh, AR router, whatever. Anyway, um, then we talk about our main topic, and then we do our chick picks, which are three things each that we think you should check out. So uh, we're going to dive right in to the news as soon as I read your comments, make sure nobody's... Oh, Ellie? Elias? Elias? I never know Oh, hey! Your name. It's Elias! Yeah, hey! Um, my, our screen was green. Yes, it he was, was Your dad was not right. a fan of that. <laughs> he was like, no. He wasn't a fan of the espionage. No, no Mission Impossible crap in here, man. We no, gotta that. stick to the realistic... We have spooky cups. Spooky! Spooky. Mine is spookier. Hers is creppier. Mine is pretty creppy. But, uh, yeah, this whole month is Halloween. You disrespect my cups. Uh, this whole month is Halloween. If anybody tells you otherwise, they're a goddamn bold-faced liar. Um, but yeah, welcome to Halloween at the Rebel Base. So, I guess let's get right into the news. Yes, so... Uh, first up, there has uh, been making the rounds the article about the new study showing that video games actually decrease violence. Um, so I read the study, and it actually it says that video games may decrease violence. We'll get to their methodology in just a second. But it also says that if you have certain pre-existing personality traits, that you are more inclined to become more violent and more of a jerk after playing violent video games. Hmm. Um, So the way they basically did it is they looked at the violence over the years when big violent games were released. And what they found was that uh, in years where a violent video game was released, um, crime decreased. And it would last for like a little bit, and then it would go back up to normal a little while after the release. So based on this study, it would then be suggested that we constantly release violent video games so that all the people who would be shooting up high schools are in their Ah. homes playing video games instead of going out and killing people. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I would love to read a little deeper into the methodology of this one. Um, I have seen other um, studies show that it is quite possible that there's no link between violence video games and violence in real life. There's also, of course, the the um, correlation not equaling ca- causation because some people who are violent want to be, but I was. I like to get in fights, and I loved Mortal Kombat. Mm. Um, so did I like to fight because I played Mortal Kombat at a young age, or what, did I gravitate to Mortal Kombat because I like to fight? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, check out the study for yourself, Google it, it should pop right up, it's in the news right now. You know, it kind of reminds me of the marketing campaign that um, Nintendo has for Smash Brothers now, where it's just like, in every commercial there's a conflict, and instead of like fighting or yelling at each other, they're just like, all right. We're going to settle this shit in Smash. Settle it in Smash. Sm- settle it in Smash. Smash it in Smash. Smettle it in Shaft. Smettle it in Shaft. <laughs> We're the best. Hey! So I think that that's a pretty neat thing to do is, like, 
kind of even use video games to resolve conflicts. Right. Like, they do in Pokemon, except without the animal abuse. I also, um, would love to know if this applies to sexism as well, hmm. in that people who already have sexist tendencies choose games that are a little more sexist, um, and whether or not getting out all of your sexism in a video game would help you do less sexist acts I, in real life. I don't know. I feel like that's a little different from violence. It's slightly different, but it's often compared. Hmm. They're, like, when people bring up, oh, well, the sexism in video games is a problem because young people are going to grow up to be more sexist because of video games, it is immediately compared to, well, all these studies about violence in video games mm -hmm. haven't been able to prove anything. Mm -hmm. So in some, yeah, in some ways, yes, very different. But in other ways, it's constantly brought up so I would love to see a very similar study that could end that once and for all like oh look shut up it's not mm -hmm. the same can you make this annoying oh thing fine away? okay so there that's all of our con contact yeah. info that Sarah's currently beating but I'll make sure to put it up at the end of the podcast as well if for some reason you guys aren't following us I assume only our followers watch our podcast so you know I'll just put it up later uh moving on uh, it's so far away. Oh, a video game hacker. Um, basically, for the first time in the U.S., we have been able to get a hacker to trial and in court uh, who is overseas. So basically, wow. this group called, I think they're called Xbox Unlimited. They mm -hmm. go by XU. Uh, hacked Xbox and Activision and all these other video game companies, EA, and got a bunch of information, was selling it, actually created a, their own bootleg Xbox One before the Xbox One Woo! was released, sold one unit for like $6,000, made all this money. Well, they were eventually caught, mostly because of that Xbox scam. Mm. Um, and as soon as the, the ringleader, who's Canadian, entered the U.S., he was arrested. Wow. And uh, I believe he might be pleading guilty to mm. the charges, which will be five years in jail and then like a hundred and twenty thousand dollar fine. You know what else happened? And it's not super nerdy, um, but this week uh, we had uh, what was it? Oh gosh, there was a, a campus rapist that was finally persecuted. Oh, yeah. Good. Or, wait, 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 no, no, it was a, a no, 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 it wasn't a rapist No at all. rapist Completely was persecuted, ever, what are you talking about? This is actually somebody who, uh, this is a, a fat old white man who shot up a car full of black teenagers. Fat asshole. Because, oh, for the loud music. For the loud yes, music, and I he killed a boy in there, mm -hmm. and he is being charged yep. uh, with first degree murder. Yep. Which is like the it, first time this has ever happened. Why? But yeah, they were able to find him guilty. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah. In, in case y'all can't see, turn turn your head a little bit to that. Look at this. She is rocking the anime hairstyle today. She looks straight up like the original Dante, except oh. with dark hair instead of white. Oh, but like, I'm really you. a fan of this. This is beautiful. Thanks. Just you. wanted you to know. Yeah. And sorry for our audio that. listeners that you can't see it. Feel free to go on Katrina's Twitter and and hound her for pictures. Yes, of course. I'll just keep doing my hair all anime. I'll all day. All, anime, all day, every day. All, all day. I do is anime. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so next up is the Humble Bundle uh, deal a little while ago. Girl, stop shaking the camera, which is dropping of your beer all hard. Hey. Um, Humble Bundle celebrated female protagonists in games, which yes. I think was great timing on Humble Bundle's part. Yes. Um, and they put a bunch of games for sale. It might be over by now, but I'm not sure. But either way, you should always check out Humble Bundle. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what they are, they're a website where you can buy games and you pay whatever you want. And the game for that month goes towards a specific charity. Mm -hmm. So while it was the um, female protagonist games uh, bundle, the charity was Girls uh, Who Code, I believe. Oh, wow, that's uh, awesome. I have it here. So yeah, go, no. Girls Who Code is still relatively new, one. too, but it's no. going really, really well. Oh, it's somewhere. Gr girls Make Games. Oh, there we go. Well, uh, girls, it's still going good. Girls Who Code is also a really good thing. So mm -hmm. Girls uh, Make Games is basically a bunch of summer camps and uh, things like that to help get girls excited and interesting and making video interested in making video games, which is really needed because you know I had a lot of people say, oh yeah I'm attending the school for blah 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 to learn how to make video games or oh well Sarah if you like video games and you want them to be less sexist why don't you make your own video games? Growing up I had no idea it was even an option. Mm -hmm. Be a 
path that would one day lead to me making video games, even mm -hmm. writing for video games, any of that. In fact, yeah. the idea that I could do PR for video games, which is what I ended up doing when I moved out here, didn't occur to me until graduation year of college. It's mind blowing, yeah. <laughs> like I mean, what I do right now, if I if you had told me when I was a kid that like, yeah, of course you can like edit the page of like a new site that only talks about nerdy shit, like and get paid a living wage. Right. Like, that's just guess. mind blowing. So, yeah, and you know, I, I feel like girls are a little more rational in a way about their career decisions just because it's harder. I, overall, and I think, you yeah, know? and I think we're told to be, we're taught to be, whereas guys can, you know, for example, this is an ad hominem, of course, but so, like, my nephew is never, he's a ne'er do good, ne'er do well. He ain't, a, he ain't watching right now, so I don't have to worry about talking back about him. Like, he's got a baby, he's got another baby. Actually, he has two babies, an ex wife, and bad credit. And he's younger than me. But you know what my mom and my family always say? They're like, oh, you know, he's just finding himself. Boys take longer than girls, blah, blah, blah. So I do think that our society often, like, lets guys slide because boys will be boys and all of those things. Whereas mm. girls, it's like, all right, you can stay in this apartment with me, but you got to clean the house. You got to do this. And girls are like, all right, I got to go by. <laughs> I, I found a job. I got to go Bye, 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 bye. bye. Of course, yes. that's just a generalization, but mm -hmm. you know. but uh, yeah, it's a really good cause. So I'm I'm actually really happy. I didn't get my hands on this bundle, so hopefully it's still. Oh, and some of the games were around. Defenders Quest, Valley of the Forgotten, Long Live the Queen, Lily Looking Through, Miss Explosion Man, The Cat Lady, The Yog, and Valda's Story, Abyssal City. I've played The Yog. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, I've watched playthroughs of The Cat Lady. It is a horror game, and it is horrifying. So I will never play it. Great. Um, but I was just about to ask, like, what's that game about? That's right. Fun. She so got excited. Like, She's like, cats! I love cats! No! I'm there! Yeah! yeah. Blood. I just I'm found out about something. a game called Dog Football the other day. It's, uh, and it was so funny. Okay, so there's a, a YouTube user, his name is Video Game Donkey. He makes, like, a lot of them completely derailing us, and I'm sorry. Oh, but it. Hello, makes... Swag Daddy 245. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, what? He makes a bunch of videos, and he's really, really funny. Funny guy. Hilarious guy. And, um, he, like, highlighted this one, like, old, old, like, early E3, like, 1998 interview. It was, like, this tiny Asian girl, like, interviewing this football player, and he's, like, sponsoring this game or whatever. And, like... It's just so hilarious because he's talking about this is a professional football player talking about dog football where dogs play football and he's just like and the graphics they're so revolutionary. Did he <laughs> say the word innovation three times? Probably sometimes. Amazing. Yeah. Wonderful. I'm like, for it. Keywords that his PR person was like you say this and this and this and this and this. Yes. It's true. Um, for DC the truth ask I don't know which one you're talking about but I give amazing head. And I receive amazing head. Shout out to the guy over there asleep who gives me amazing head. Anyway, um, so it was also the N60, it was a chat comment. It was also the N64's birthday on the 30th, and so I thought we could share. Did you play the N64 growing up? I loved the N64 growing up. In fact, my dad is in um, this chat right now. And that was, like, something that we used to play all the time together. We used to play uh, Duke Nukem. Mm -hmm. Things that I was not supposed to play as a I child. Was say, wait, how old my, are you? My dad was like, parental lock, boom, all right, we're going to play some Duke Nukem. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and that, Mario 64, uh, uh, fucking Pokemon Stadium when that mm -hmm. came out. Hey, you Pikachu was mainly just me, oh like, yelling angrily and going, like, can you fucking get over the bridge, you piece of shit? You're so stupid. You're so stupid, Pikachu. How old were you when you were saying this to your N64? <laughs> yes. um, my, uh, young. my favorite game to play in the N64 was a Star Wars game that people keep telling me the name of, but I keep forgetting it. Can I say Saturn Shadows of the Empire? I'm, I'm no? Sure. Shadows of the Empire was about Bash sure. Rendar. Yeah, wait, it, yeah, it was, like, not one of the main characters. It was yeah. some guy. And every time he got hit, he would go, Burr. and whenever you got a coin, it would be like, Burr. and anyway, then you'd have to like fight these, wampas and yes. stuff, and they'd be behind like big blocks. Do you like, remember that big, big slow wampa? <laughs> he's like just like being a terrified bitch, just, and you see him for far off. You're like, oh, I gotta remember when I get there that that wampa is there. But you would always forget that he'd be like, wampa you. Um, <laughs> I remember that was like the first video game battle that 
uh, in that game, uh, the first video game battle that ever terrified me was with IG88. Because mm-hmm. he would just jump play. behind you. I could like, oh. yeah, I couldn't win that battle because I would get too scared, and so I had to give it to my nephew to beat he because it terrified me. Yeah. yeah, no, that that battle terrified me. And then uh, the having to use the controls to tie up the ATATs mm-hmm. and um, oh, right, right. you'd have to use the cables and, and stuff. That, that battle on Hoth that opened the mm-hmm. whole game. Oh that, my god! And I remember that being the most difficult thing for me in a video game up until that point was trying to tie around, I think it was the AT-ATs that gave yeah. me the most trouble. Um, so yeah, lots of fun memories of my N64. I used, I used to play a game called War Gods as well, um, which is, a, looking back, probably a horrible fighting game from Midway <laughs> uh, with all the gods, like, oh, here's, um, I can't think of a god right now, sorry, mm-hmm. uh, here's Anubis, and he's fighting... Isis, you know, it was, it was stupid and weird, but I loved it. You know what I did not like for it? My Zelda game. And that's- oh yeah, the Zelda games were the, and it's horrible because you had like other fantasy games coming out around that time. Banjo Kazooie blew it out of the park. I liked this one game that was glitchy, and it was called uh, Silicon Valley or Silicone, Silicon something Valley. Is that both of our phones just being quiet? No, that's oh. you. Oh. Oh. You received a friend request. Oh my god, guys. Don't turn... Can you hold friend request until the end of the podcast because it will make a noise and notification and then our audio podcast will hear that mm-hmm. and that just makes me really sad. Also, yes. I won't accept any for friend requests. <laughs> uh, so movie um, god though, but yeah, we both have fond memories of the N64. Yeah, I love I love the N64. Golden happy Eye was birthday. another big one. Oh yeah, huh? Golden Eye. Yeah. Same. So happy birthday N64. Actually, <laughs> yay! See, like, everybody had the fucking, the Dreamcast at that time. Everybody, like, I around the didn't even know what a Dreamcast was. I, my friend, who was also coincidentally named Sarah, but she was Korean. Um, Fuck that other Sarah, she's not me. Station. And a fucking Dreamcast. She had everything but the N64. So, yeah. like, she'd come over to my house. And we play N64, and then I go over to her house and play literally everything else. But I, yeah, <laughs> I had a friend like that. Shout out to Christy Mortalis because she also introduced me to Totoro, which was I bl- not my first anime because I watched Unico as a child because mm. America thought that movie was for kids. They did not know <laughs> what the anime was. It was it ruined me for the rest of my life. But anyway, I used to go to her house to play Super Nintendo because I at that time I just had a Nintendo. And then eventually my nephew got a PlayStation, so I'd go to his house to play the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. I never had like the current system. We were poor. We were in N64 house for a really long time. I didn't like the N64 that much, because especially <laughs> compared to the PlayStation, I ended up becoming a Sony girl immediately once yeah. the PlayStation happened. Once I got that PlayStation 2, like, God, oh, memories. I can, like, taste the food I used yeah. to eat back then. Ramen, by the way, because I was a horrible, horrible anime nerd No, I was, spawn. I was ramen as well. I mean, I ramen lazy. and play Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> so lazy. I still remember playing, like, actually, I think I mentioned this before, that uh, playing Spyro on the PS1 mm. links to Exhibit in my head. Did I tell the story? No. I used to, uh, Exhibit's Man vs. Machine came out around the same time I finally got a PS1, the smaller version of a PlayStation 1, <laughs> and uh, I, would, I listened to that album instead. Guys, stop it. That's not cute, guys. Uh, I listened to that album instead of the game music for Spyro because I was a completionist and I'd already been playing Spyro for a really long time and I was like done with that music. So to this day if I hear uh, any exhibit from that album or if I see uh, that Spyro game, like the two are linked in my mind. It's really awkward. Anyway, moving on to more news. Um, yes. Middle Earth Shadows of Mordor came out. Yes, that um, looks really good. There are a actually. lot of really great reviews. I decided mm. based on the reviews and watching the gameplay it's not for me because mm. it's, a, it's definitely a um, melee combat kind of um, Batman Arkham City kind of game um, but it looks really cool and I'm really excited that they finally stepped away from what they traditionally do with um, Lord of the Ring games and mm. movie games in general which is always like oh it's this action game and it's a very normal action game. This looks actually innovative Yeah. And that word is always used for games that are not innovative but I'm going to use innovative. it now be like no I actually game changer. think this method of game changer sorry <laughs> I liked that um, I actually think this is pretty innovative and looks pretty cool, and so I can't wait to watch some YouTubers stream it, because mm-hmm. I'm not going to play it. Um, oh, uh, something else that came out this week, uh, Legend of Korra, just because mm-hmm. we talked about it a lot last week. Um, it's going in a very different direction. The um, One of the main antagonists is voiced by Zelda Williams. Um, 
who just came back to Twitter, so that's really cool. She kills it, by the way. Like, she's the head bitch in charge. Um, and I liked the episode, but it's going to take a little while to sell me. And then, of course, it's going to have to depend on, like, what's happening with Cora Because, like, if she comes back and she's still a stupid little brat after getting her body broken, like, I don't know what else to do. You know? Like, I don't know what else to tell you, Cora. You're a bitch. Like, yeah, she is. What I, can I do? I didn't like this episode. I was bored. Yeah. It was, it was... Like, it was like, oh, that person, I like that person, they're cool. Ah. <sighs> it was it was pretty boring, not to spoil anything, but you, you, it's three years in the future. Um, that's not a spoiler, they've already announced that. And mm-hmm. so you're getting to see adult versions of characters, but they're, they grew up to be kind of boring adults. How do I turn the I don't know, because the sound is off. Okay, whatever. So guys, once again, please stop sending friend requests, and please stop doing the um, interactive things, simply because we are filming this for audio as well. And those little noises are pretty annoying. Uh, save them for the end of the podcast. We, yes, we will tell you do all of kinds of crazy stuff. Um, so it, it, I just I didn't like it. Nobody was interested. It was just like, oh, here's older Asami. She's a young lady now. Here's Mako. <laughs> He's so boring. He became a bodyguard. Yep. Like it's just like. <sighs> and I love it. I love it. They're like set. It, like my hope with Mako because they're already setting him up to like ship away. I'm just like, can they just ship him away for the entire, like, season? Because yeah. that'd be great. If can he could just, just be off in the air qu- air kingdom and shit, and just not... Can you please block Silly Wabbit since he can't follow directions? Mom. <laughs> Thank you, Mods. Love you. And block Mahmood since he's an asshole. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, Korra, first episode hasn't really got me hooked, but it's not terrible enough that I will stop watching it. I'm definitely gonna watch the I'll give it the three-episode run, yeah. and that kind of goes with Gotham, too. Uh, now me, I have the last one episode, episode that Yeah, done. the last Bye. episode was kind of like, oh, um, but it was about Selena Kyle, so I had to watch it, uh. But it was, like, very whatever. I caught up on a lot of TV. I watched that Once Upon a Time episode that came out. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, Once Upon I a Time. I actually just read a blog that had pictures from the episode with hilarious words on it, and it was like watching that episode. Oh, great. That, <laughs> well, honestly, that's all you need. Watch the episode. That's all you need. That episode was terrible. Um, but sorry. Yeah, sorry for derailing that. Let's... No, no, it's fine. Stop shaking the camera, you bitch. I hit um, the table. The, uh, no, Gotham, I gave it one episode, and I was done, because that one episode was horrible. Horrendous. I will speak on behalf of The Flash and say that it's a pretty fucking good series. Uh, the first ten mi- minutes are, like, a little wonky. It's going to be a little hard to adjust to. But then, like, once they get the ball rolling in the first episode, it's it's really... It's not, like, amazing, but it's like, wow, I could keep watching this show because it's entertaining well, like enough, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I feel you. Maybe... Maybe one day when, like, at, like what happened with Arrow, where everyone mm-hmm. was like, oh, now this show is good. Okay, boom. I'm yeah, on. Yeah. That's going to be me with Gotham, if at all. Um, so, Isis, <laughs> by the way, uh, they don't go by Isis anymore, but I can't remember ISL, what ISL, Isis, the bad guys. Um, the bad guys. The bad guys. Oh, isn't that so American of us to just decide they're the bad guys? <laughs> Um, so the people you've been hearing about in American <laughs> news as everyone. ISIS, although they are not, they don't go by ISIS, uh, but whatever. They're not to be confused with the Archer uh, spy organization. But I am glad that they have changed their name because that's going to make it a lot easier to talk about Archer. I really hope that in Archer they make a joke having something to do with ISIS. Like I pray with all my heart. Anyway, we're going to get bumped. Did you know that they actually have used Call of Duty in their recruitment efforts? Like, they were like, this could be you in real life, and, like, took, like, a Call of Duty uh, game cover and, like, put their bodies on it, but with, like, faces, like, come join the resistance. And I was just like, ah! And so, yeah. Who's their graphic designer? I don't know, but apparently (laughs) they are, like, Who's their marketing person? (laughs) They apparently reach out to people through, like, Kick and stuff like that. Like, they get online. They're like, yeah, man, I love apple pies and ice cream. Come fight with us. And, like... Yeah, Call of Duty in real life, bro. And, like, recruit people that way. And it kind of freaked me out. But it's also interesting that video games are, I don't know, I guess popular enough that a terrorist organization is like... So if anybody tries to recruit you, please report it. Or Um, just, um... You don't want to go into that... Tell them you belong to Rebel Base. There are no showers when you're a terrorist. No showers. First off, forget showers. You're going to smell like shit. You're going to smell your own crotch for the rest of your life. (laughs) And if that isn't a reason to not be a terrorist... 
I don't know what it is. I can't. I can't. Now, like, I gotta shower um, like three genitals. times a day. I'm weird. Um, three times, damn girl. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, so next we have Pharrell's music video for It Girl. Please Google it if you haven't seen it, just to so you know what we're talking about. So basically, he made a video with wait, I'm gonna say the names: <coughs> Takashi Murakami and Fantasy. Just put in a really quick uh, opinion. I really love Takashi Murakami stuff. A little while ago, he did. Uh, a commercial in collaboration with Coach, or Louis Vuitton, rather, and it was so, like, it was a, a, a great display of, like, his animation genius, and it was really catchy, it was really fun, it was a great story, um, and I didn't want to, I didn't feel like they were like, yeah, dude, get a bag, get a fucking bag, um, so that was nice, but... It Girl is a little weird. It's like Pharrell lusting after, like, little 12-year-old anime girls. Yeah, it's, it's funny because we watched it. We both had very different reactions to it. Uh, so it blends, in his music video, it's a, like, anime-style music video, and also it goes into, like, retro video games. And when I was watching, I was like, on the one hand, I'm, I'm cool... I'm, I'm cool with this being mainstream enough to be used by an artist, mm -hmm. uh, or even to introduce people to anime. Mm -hmm. um, but... It bothered me, me, that there were no people of color in it except him. And, you know, that's such a problem already in anime where they don't have a lot of representation, mostly because Japanese animators, don't, I mean, they know they what they know. They Japan, yeah. Right. I mean, like, I, even then, I would kind of let them edge by because when you live, in, you live in a country where, like, everyone's the same race. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not... There are very few black people, very just few like, Spanish people. So, you know, a lot of times it's like, okay, they're, they're aiming for what they know. Yeah, you... be like, oh, hey, yes, <laughs> one of these girls have brown skin. Can we have some black girls? Um, so that bothered me personally, but then Katrina was bothered by something else. Yeah, um, all of the girls are just very, I mean, you know, with anime, you're used to, like, Moe style. Like, all of my friends are into, like, um, Idol Master and Love Live and shit like that. So it, it kind of seemed like Love Live or like, oh, I'm going to dress you up. Oh, here's this. Oh, I'm going to give you these accessories so you can, because you're playing the game to, like, make the girl become really popular right. as an idol. But this was just kind of weird. It was just kind of like, like, Pharrell didn't really have any, like, end game. Like, there was no reason for him to, like, go after. And it's I'm just, like, picking it apart. Pharrell is, like, an older man. He's, like, an old man. <laughs> and like, it, like, shows him at some point being a grown-ass man, like, standing by the trees watching the girls in the ocean. And he's, just, like, like, watching them. Like, God. what the fuck? It's, like, really weird. Like... I, and I understand that culture because I really like idols. Like, I'm, I'm a really big AKB48 fan, quietly. Um, but, like, at the same time, it's just like, oh, do you, would you really put that in a music video? Like, can you at least, like, age them up? Can you, like... Can you age them up? Age them, just... Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's <laughs> interesting. It's, it's interesting that uh, that's become mainstream enough to be used. And, you know, something that a lot of people don't talk about is, is that black culture has a lot of love for anime. Mm. Like, Dragon mm. Ball Z means a lot to most young black people in the world right now. They're like, dude, let me talk to you about Dragon Ball Z. Um, so, you know, this whole idea that you're not a cool black person if you watch anime, if you're an otaku, is kind of starting to fade. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting to see this kind of video come out. And then, of course, The Weeknd had a video earlier where it was very... Japanese influenced, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I think somebody else. Um, and I like these. I mean, like that's what I like about Pharrell's videos. I don't feel like it's like Gwen Stefani using like five Asian yeah. assorted Asian girls as backup dancers. It's like I really love anime. Like I really love video games. Blah blah blah. And maybe he just didn't think about it. Like, hey Pharrell, you're right. like thirty. He probably didn't <laughs> so think about I love that anime. Way. But you know, like uh, so I. I, again, I always try to keep an, uh, an open mind and hope for the best for everyone, but this is the same guy I'm who sort of participated in you're Blurred the, Lines. So. You're the optimist and I'm the pessimist of Rebel Maybe Bates. one day they yes. won't be a um, shitbag! There are a ton of people in here, so I'm Holy just going to reiterate real quick that I'm Sarah the Rebel, this is Okatrina, this is our podcast, Rebel Base, where we talk about gaming and comics. We are in the news section, and next we'll be heading to our main topic. So, uh, the last piece of... <coughs> no, second... Yeah, last piece of news. Ha! Uh, was the girls can't be superheroes thing where basically um, this store is offering you the chance to put your face on an action figure mm. 
but your options are Iron Man and Captain America. <laughs> so there's no Gamora, there's no Black Widow. So if you're a girl that wants to have your face put on an action figure. Or um, anybody who doesn't like or, Iron Man and Captain America. Or, I don't know, maybe a little boy who wants to have your face put on Black Widow or Gamora. Yes. Uh, you don't have that option. And it's kind of like, y'all couldn't just offer it? Like, maybe it wouldn't have been popular. But if it's not popular, then cool, you don't have to worry about uh, spending money. But you know, like yeah. I feel like out of uh, right now, out of out of every Marvel female, Black Widow is the most popular. Like everyone from all sides is just like, well, we should just have a Black Widow movie. Even people like I talk to people from Gamergate, and they're just like, is Black Widow next or some shit like that? Like I find that even people who oppose my views are just like, it's gonna happen regardless of what we think. Right. Um, so it's just like she's so mainstream, and then you've got like a lot of really super mainstream Marvel women, Marvel women out there, like Storm. Everybody knows who Storm is. Everybody knows who Rogue is. Like that kind of stuff. And it's just ridiculous that they wouldn't just throw it in. It's like all you gotta do is clip out a piece of her face, man. Like yeah, what the fuck. Don't be so lazy, man. It's, yeah, it's so, just lazy. It was kind. Of, it was kind of annoying that they were like, nope, only boys get to be action figures. Oh my god. Okay, guys, to reiterate, please stop sending friend requests and please stop doing the emoticons. Or it was at the end of you. the podcast. We'll kick you out. We don't care. We'll block the shit out of you. So, yeah. on to our main topic. We are talking about geek merchandise. Yes! And the issues it has brought up, uh, sexism-wise. Yes. So, to start us off, the reason why we're talking about it is that, um, you may have seen this floating around Tumblr and Twitter. Uh, they released two shirts recently. One is, like, Superman, like, kind of mwah, kissing Wonder Woman, like, mm-hmm. the you know, the this shit. You know what this mm-hmm. shit is. You know what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, Superman scores again or wins again. Yeah, and, it's just, like, score, Superman does it again. Super, score, Superman does it again. And the other shirt is training to be Batman's wife. Mm. So there was a lot of kickback on this. I mean, we won't even go into the full arguments of it, but we will tell you a few because that's who we are. So let me say something about the Superman shirt. First off, it was a um, it was originally the cover of Justice League number twelve post New Fifty Two, and in that cover, Wonder Woman is actually using her lasso to pull Superman into she a kiss. She's tied up in her it's lasso. Like, and the thing is, it's act- it actually seems romantic because he has his hand around hands around her pretty gently, and that's why her fist is awkwardly like this in the shirt. And it's just like, first off, I would never let my child go out in an inaccurate shirt like that. This shirt is too like, fucking inaccurate. I would not risk my child going out and being and called change. a filthy casual. Because if I saw someone wearing that shirt, I'd be like, they've never read the Justice League. They don't give a shit about Wonder Woman and Superman. Because obviously, they don't know where that fucking shit is from. Second, the, like without everything. Also, her hair is like changed this way. Superman has extra mullet hair in the back. Like, Not even touching on the sexism part. The shirt is inaccurate as hell, and if anybody let their kid out in front of, in it, I would feel bad for that kid because he'd look like a fucking moron. Yeah. But um, it made me pretty upset because it changes the dynamic of what the picture was about. It yes. was two strong people coming together, mm-hmm. and then the shirt has made it like, ha ha, conquered the Wonder Woman. And it was like really like a part of it was really sexy, like like they were both completely compliant they obviously wanted it in the in the original cover and it was like sexy and romantic and like cool cuz in a way, Wonder Woman was majorly scoring, and Superman was like, "Fuck you!" Yeah, Wonder kiss Woman you. scores again. Wonder Woman Fuckers. scores again. Like, why? Are, why can't an Amazonian princess score every once in a while? I know, and like, drive me crazy. Whatever. Um, um, but yeah, like you know, and going on to Batman's wife. First off, I have a lot of ever? questions. I have a lot of questions though. First off, no, 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 besides just never. whatever. Besides, that, we're gonna get to that in a second. Oh god. How do you train to be Batman's wife? Because it's one of two things. <laughs> you are either training to be a wife, or you're training in martial arts. So that you don't get killed. Right, so, okay, let's address training to be a wife. Who the fuck, where they do that at? It's not that hard. Fucking bake him a turkey once, and once a year. Bake him a turkey, you're a wife. Training you to be it. a wife. Hmm. Um, Maybe be a nice person and a good partner. Training <laughs> training to be, like, training in martial arts, why don't you just say training to be Batwoman, training to be Batgirl, training to be Catwoman. All them motherfuckers done kiss Bruce Wayne at some point. Third of all, we're gonna get to your point. Why the fuck would you want to marry that nutcase? <laughs> and everyone, that. everyone who gets close to Batman gets maimed. It's horrible. I would and date him. And that's if they're lucky. If they're lucky, they get him. maimed. 
framed. I wouldn't marry the if fool. They're, if they're unlucky, they get beaten to death in a every skull night, with you don't a crowbar. Get cuddles, you never get cuddles. No, you get kidnapped. No night would you ever get a cuddle, because Batman is out being Batman every night. Why would you marry that fool? Uh, so anyway, before mm-hmm. we get to DC's answer, which was very interesting, I'll also say I asked Twitter some questions. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. thinking about this, this shirt is aimed at a thir- like 13-year-old girls. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking back to when I was 13, and when I was 13, I wanted to be Catwoman. And I, as Catwoman, I wanted to make out with Bruce. But I didn't think of the heroes I was reading about in comics, I didn't think of them sexually. Mm-hmm. So I was curious if other people did. Because I wasn't thinking like, oh yeah, Thor, I want to bang him. It was more like, oh yeah, Thor, where's that cool female villain that he fights? Like, mm-hmm. it, it, To me, it was never like, I want to marry a bad man mm-hmm. um, when I was a preteen. So I asked Twitter, you know, most of my Twitter followers are adults, if they would ever date a superhero and if they would ever marry a superhero. And I got some interesting um, answers. Oh. So I expected that the guys would say yes with no reservations. Mm-hmm. And I expected that women would probably say, hell no, them motherfuckers crazy. <laughs> so I was delightfully surprised to see that within the third answer I got from a guy was a guy saying, I don't know, man. <laughs> Like, that seems like dating a celebrity. Like, you would you would never get to be with them. And I, who would I cuddle? Mm-hmm. I'd never get to cuddle because she'd be off hanging out with hunky superhero guys. Like, so there was, like, immediately <laughs> one guy who was, like, consequence. <laughs> but what I did see was the vast majority of people lined up with what I imagined, which is most guys said yes, totally. Mm-hmm. And most girls said, no, I have these reservations, which are based on, like, my safety them actually loving me, them being insane, Mm -hmm. uh, them being a a pain in the butt to deal with. Um, So then a lot of people asked me, but there were women who were like, yes, I'd fuck him. Mm -hmm. So then I realized a lot of people were actually saying they would sleep with a superhero, but they wouldn't marry a superhero. Mm -hmm. Um, So all of that, I just found that pretty interesting. These are all some geeky people, and I told them, you're only talking about comics. I told them, if you've only seen the movies, exclude yourself from this conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it was interesting to see that it, it was probably a result of a guy being like, I would totally marry Batwoman. I'm sure little girls want to marry Batman. <laughs> uh, versus, like, I don't know, some research and focus groups. But it's just like, I mean, despite all of this, you've got to think about who works in merchandising alongside like brands like Walmart. There's somebody at DC who is a contact person and gives it the yes or the no. And there seems to be such a disconnect between the writers and the artists of DC and the people who are in marketing and making the executive decisions and it just blows my mind that like a company would not work in simpatico like that like right. every time DC makes a bad decision all of their writers go like what the fuck yeah. like Batman would never act like that or Wonder Woman wouldn't do that or like why would anybody want to be Batman's wife that's fucking dangerous like yeah and it's just like why they're trying to make moves they put jeff johns in like an administrative position but i feel like there's such little care for comics at the upper levels of dc um in comparison to the people who are like passionately creating this stuff well, so. and it's not just the creators dc released a statement <laughs> mm-hmm. saying you're right this shirt and that shirt are offensive and they're mm-hmm. not okay. And we're going to work harder to make sure that the silos communicate with each other more. So which, hopefully. Right, which basically just let us know that they have some other folks making their merchandise and they're not having to go through the correct approval processes. Mm-hmm. They probably go through simple like trademark approval and that's it. Versus, hey, does this fit the overall message yeah. that we're trying to send? So that was a lot about the negative thing that happened with DC. Let's talk mm-hmm. about some positive geek merchandise. Yay. Um, so, bloop, 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 bloop. which one do I want to talk about? Oh, first I'll talk about Halloween costumes. Mm-hmm. If you don't have children, this isn't something you probably notice. I don't have children, but I have a lot of nieces and nephews, so I'm always very aware of this sort of thing. Little kids today, if you're a little girl, mm-hmm. you can be Spider-Man and wear a normal Spider-Man outfit. Mm-hmm. You can be Spider-Woman. Or you can be Pink Princess Spider-Man. That's awesome! And there are tons of these options. There are actual, what? like, whole party sets where every what? girl who comes to your house can get a tiara with a superhero in the middle of it, a wand with a superhero, a puffy pink dress covered in the superhero's clothes. Dude! It's pretty amazing. If you go to, like, costume stores, you can go to some even My heart just grew, like, three sizes. Fucking crazy. 
<laughs> so um, pretty happy. That's so cute. It's pretty awesome that Halloween costumes have really gotten on board with this idea of like girls can like superheroes and they can like superheroes in their own way. And if little boys want to like superheroes in this way, they mm-hmm. can do it as well. There's there's a lot of options, mm-hmm. and it's made both in pink and purple and normal colors. Mm-hmm. And it's like they're really trying to be like, girls, we know you like superheroes. We know you want to dress superheroes. Here you go. You can be a superhero, or you can be a princess superhero. <laughs> and uh, that makes me really happy, and I, I really think you're makes, doing a great job. I'm really, really happy about You know, like, my niece turns one this month, um, and she already, she's already playing with, like, Super Mario plushies, and, like, because her mom is, like, super dorky, too. Um... And, yeah, I'm really excited for that, because I want, you know, if my niece turns out to like comics and like nerdy stuff, I want her to be able to, like, access that. Right. And, you know, like, I I, I think that's a really nice thing to see when you mm-hmm. walk down an aisle where fucking, like, they've made Sexy Olaf this year. Oh, my sexy God. Sexy Olaf. Please Google Sexy Yo, Olaf. Co- sexy Halloween costume. Olaf, so bad. Oh, um, my God. It's and, you know, see, like, that kind of stuff for little girls instead. So yeah. it's it's refreshing when you go through a pile of shit and you find a crystal. So, <laughs> yeah, in a way. A like, crystal. Yeah, exactly. And, like, you know, and, and there are, like, tons of little boys out there that, like, want to wear tutus and shit right. and be, like, a superhero and a girl superhero and stuff. Mm-hmm. And... I think if we give people options, like, what's the problem, well, what's the worst thing that could happen? You find out a product doesn't work one year, so you change it for the next year. Right. Like, it's very, very basic right. marketing So, prowess. it looks like it's working. I've been seeing this for a few years now, and it, it makes me happy. Um, and look, who is it affecting negatively? Literally no one. No one is. Literally no one is being. This. You still have little boys that can have their fucking Spider-Man costumes, and the evil feminazis are not destroying your Spider-Man. They're just making... A wider margin for your profit. Feminazi! Ah, sorry, I'm a feminazi. Sorry, I'm making your money! My... Ah. <laughs> Somebody gift that, or we're not friends. <laughs> um, so we talked about the DC shirt, talked about the response. Um, so there was also this statement made a while earlier, um, though I could not find anything confirming it, mm-hmm. um, by the guy who made uh, the teen show that we both hated the second season of. Why is that name just escaping Young me? Justice? Young Justice. Yes. That they stopped the show because girls liked it and girls don't buy toys. Couldn't actually find anything uh, very quickly in a quick search about girls not liking to buy toys. Oh, it was Paul Dini, by the way. He was talking to Kevin Smith at that time. So I couldn't find anything um, supporting that, but... So supposedly if girls don't buy toys, uh, part of the reason could possibly be due to how girl toys are marketed. For example, every female action figure I had had titties this big. Like a Trina <laughs> size, t- I'm just kidding. Um, like huge, giant bazongas. Bazongas. So there are some girls who might be like, mm, oh, this is intimidating. Like worse than Barbie. Mm-hmm. Um, or there might be some girls who just don't feel like the female characters resonate with them. Or you know, maybe they don't like the colors. Maybe those girls weren't allowed to go down the blue aisle at the store mm-hmm. because I will tell you right now, my mom would fight me because I'd always be in the blue aisle trying to buy some action figures, and she's like, come on, the pink aisle is over here. And I'd be like, fine, I'm buying Barbies, my Barbies are going to war, these Barbies are slaves, and they're gonna get eaten by the tiger. My mom's like, whatever, as long as you're playing with Barbies. Anyway, um, so I had a huge tin of action figures that Jesus. I just bought with my own money. My mom was very, li- but it's funny, because I was talking about this with somebody. My mom was only gender binary about things that she was told to be. Mm. So, for example, toy swords were not in the blue aisle. Toy mm. swords were in a random aisle with other, like, things, like, proppy things. Mm-hmm. So I had so many toy swords that I could buy, my mom had no problem with it because they weren't in the blue aisle. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand, mom. Um, I, uh, you know, and I was very, like, I, I feel like I grew up very privileged in that way. Um, like, I mean, my dad, when I did chores and didn't do anything bad and when we could afford it he would take me to the comic book store because that's where I wanted to be like and I feel like it's really important that parents kind of just sit down and listen to their kids instead and go like so where do you want to go get your toys today and it's like well I want to go to the pink aisle or like I want to go to the fucking comic book store and get some like nice Return of the Jedi cards which is what I got. I got. Oh, I used to have so many. Do you remember in. the Star Wars toy where you could plug it in and it had like a little microchip? It was yeah, yeah, yeah. And how After the Phantom Menace came out, I, I had so like of all of those. And then you could scan them and be like, Pfft, and yeah. it's like 3PO or somebody would yes. talk to you. Nobody bought Bar- yeah. but like Jar Jar. It was exciting. Yeah. I didn't have Jar Jar. Fuck that guy. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, so there, 
it's also a funny thing that a lot of parents can accidentally influence their children. For example, my niece, before she was old enough to really communicate very clearly with us, it was mm. always made clear in her presence that her mom hated her hair. She's a little mixed baby. She's got black people hair. My sister is not black. She doesn't know how to deal with it. Mm. She would say that she hated her hair. So my niece was very interested in getting her hair straightened at a very young age. Mm -hmm. And my sister would try to say, no, she wants it, she likes it. And I'd have to explain to my sister, you're doing this to her because she knows you hate her hair. Mm -hmm. Um, So the same thing happens with toys. If, you know, depending on the kind of kid you are, I was a very rebellious child. I may even like action figures simply because I knew my mom didn't like me liking action figures. Mm. But some kids are pleasers, and they're like, oh, my parents prefer that I play with Barbies, I'm going to play with Barbies. My parents like me to like pink, I'm going to like pink. Mm. So these are the sorts of things that stop girls from, like, it's a whole deeply intertwined, like, really, like, complicated situation in why girls don't buy certain toys or why girls don't buy certain video games, and it starts with how their people react to them when they're younger Mm -hmm. but anyway so there was a group that said hey you know what what if we made really cool action figures for girls and they are called i am elementals and their action figures are based on elements and they're dope and they're little superheroes and i love them they were kickstarted to completion in like six days um so they are taking pre-orders for december so if you have a little girl in your life that you would like to buy an action figure for to get this Christmas, please go to their website. I am Elementals, very easy. Um, and then there's another product called Goldie Blocks, Ooh. which you may have seen on the Super Bowl commercials, and you will see them in the Macy's Parade commercials. Yay! Uh, which are kind of like um, Legos for girls in a way. They're um, they focus on engineering. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. And they use colors that they know girls like because again. Girls aren't allowed down the blue aisle, or girls don't relate to the blue aisle. Cool. This is in the pink aisle. It's We're going to sneak Build this right in castle, here. Build your own castle, girl. Oh. You want to be a princess? Build your fucking castle. I would be that kind of mom. I would never have children, but if I was, I'd be like, oh, you want a castle? I'm not buying you a castle. Mm-hmm. Here are some building blocks. I feel like the best parents are the ones that give you all the tools you need and then go like, eh, do you think? Like, I've already done my job. Here are all the tools you need. Now what are you going to do? Like, it's it's kind of nice to have that set up for you. But a lot. A lot of the struggles I had to face is that I wanted a fucking, like, Spider-Man shirt, and we had to go to, like, the boys' aisle and wrestle through and see which boys' size would fit me, and then we had to go home and, like, make sure we could take it in a little so it wasn't too blocky on me, and, like, you know, and it sucks, too, because yesterday I was in Target, and that's still going on. Like, I, uh, you know, a couple weeks back, I found some really sick Batgirl underwear. Sick Batgirl! Sick Batgirl underwear, by the way. Love them. Um, But, you know, this week I walk in, and, like, all their superhero stuff for women is gone. Like, and there used to be... They just knocked them out. I don't know what the fuck's going on. And, and, like, people can't tell me that, like, chicks don't buy superhero clothes, because every goddamn time I go to Forever 21, there is, like, a Batman shirt that's not in my size, but it's the only one left. Like... I'm sorry, you can't tell me that a bunch of boys are coming to Forever 21 and buying all these shirts, because, like, we're they're not. Them. We're fucking buying them. We are. We and, got, like, my Boba Fett Day of the Dead shirt. I mean, it's not like girls wear superhero shirts, though. Cavalman! Mm. I love that shirt, by the way. I love I'm this so shirt. jealous of that shirt. Um, so, yeah. So those are some of the good ones, some of the bad ones. Did we miss any... Halloween costumes, Goldie Blocks. Oh, P.S. You should check out Goldie Blocks. But I'll talk about that in a little bit. And I think they'll do really, really well because Lego. There, there was that set that they released with female scientists and engineers, and that mm-hmm. sold out immediately. Immediately Although, gone. Uh, so another thing to check out though hmm. is there's this YouTuber who does makeup transformations, uh-huh. but she doesn't. They're never what you expect. <laughs> um, she did a Ray Rice one. It was really great. But she did a female Lego scientist one, uh-huh. and she's like, "Here are my boobs, so you know I'm a woman." <laughs> sure my makeup's on because I am a woman and anyway so she, you know. she goes through it she's hilarious and she's very um subversive her mm. humor is very it's not as blatant as I just made it but um mm. you should go check her out I think if you google like female side female lego scientist transformation you'll find it awesome um, hi to all of 131 of Paul. you hey, Paul. hey thank you all for tuning in by the way and also having pretty awesome conversation over in the chat. It's always nice to, like, lean over and see, like, you dudes really, and dudettes really, uh, talking to each other and, like, discussing this, because that's, that's all I want. I just want you guys to just bring up the idea, like, hey, this might be a little shitty. Maybe right. I should think about it a little bit. Because, right. I mean, like, and I, I love empowering men to do things like this, because 
when because I feel like our society really like has affected men. I I was and I hate to like be all like going into Where men's going? rights. Where are we going? I'm going, going into, into men's, men's issues. Right. Well, I'm going into men's going issues in. on my fucking podcast. <laughs> um, I actually watch. Uh, I follow this really great uh, Twitter account called the Good Men Project, and mm-hmm. they put out um, articles not only tell like teaching men how to like interact with women and be good feminists but also support each other too there are a lot of like male breast cancer survivors out there last week they had their twitter chat was about um male survivors of abuse like of all sorts and like they were so supportive like and it was just so everything was informational everything was support and i feel like the society we live in really affects both men and women because it was based on the ideas of these old dudes right. that are now like enforcing their way of life on everybody right. else. So we have a blue aisle and a pink aisle and God forbid a little boy walk down that right. pink aisle. And if fucking he should be able to walk wherever the fuck he wants. Like, it's going around Facebook right now is a guy who's a motivational speaker and he's like, I, you know, I asked this guy, well, what if uh, your teammates said you were a girl? And I expected him to be say he was mad or he was angry. I said, how would that make you feel? And he said it would destroy me. Mm. He said, what are we teaching young men about women that it would destroy them to be feminine? Mm. And this is a problem that a lot of older people have because they're like, well, when you give women more rights and you let feminists have what they want, which is what feminists want is a society that is good for both men and women. And part of that is, hey, men, you don't have to provide everything. You don't have to be muscle-bound. You don't have to be all these things that you've been told you have to be. You can be who you are. Uh, what men are afraid of is that they're, the men younger than them will choose to be feminine and to be women because they've been taught that women such a bad thing, such a horrible thing to be a female, that if a guy does anything that is feminine, he is a horrible guy, and he's gay, and he's die, and all these other bullshit and horrible that's, things. Like, and this, like, goes up to dudes who just take care of their fucking mm-hmm. selves. Like, I've seen oh, your my male friends... are plucked. You must be gay. Serious, I've seen my male friends, like, made fun of because they smell good. Like, how dare you not be a fucking gross, horrible slob of a person, you woman. Like, fucking, no, I want dudes to look and smell good all the time. I like, really look, like it when guys smell good. I'm so about that. P.S., so, if like, you're a guy, try to smell good. Yo, if, if you're you a smell good, single guy, you're like, how can I get a woman smell delicious? But don't, like, overdo the cologne. Don't even Just, do cologne. Fucking bake some cookies. Yeah. Bathe yourself oh, in the smell of those smell cookies. Smell like food. If you smell like a cookie, I'm going to be all on your butt. I'm going to be like, hey, how are you? <laughs> how are you? Hello. <laughs> You smell like sugar cookies. Do you smell like food? Maybe I, like I want you. to talk to you. Hi, boy. You smell like pizza. What are you doing? <laughs> mm, barbecue wings. I was just thinking about that. I love it. Um, but like, because you think we're joking right now, but we're, we're not being really serious. Joking. The way a dude smells after he's like barbecued some wings mm. and like put all the sauce over it because he smells like the sauce. Smells like, mm, smell like some <laughs> damn baby back barbecue sweet baby ray. <laughs> I'll lick you. <laughs> anyway, I have led Katrina astray, as usual. Um, so, yeah, if you're struggling to find a lady, please bathe yourself in the waters of Lake Minna Smell Good food. Yeah, um, so now we're on to the last part of this podcast, uh, which is chick pics. Is it really? It is. is. Really? We're already there. Oh, my goodness. It's almost nine. Thank you for all sticking with us this long. Wow, this is like the biggest crowd we've had for a while. Right. Huh. Um, huh. What's that noise? <laughs> 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 just shocked. <laughs> um, guys, stop for requesting me. I will never accept your for request. Um, so, Chick Picks is the section of the show where we talk about three things we each recommend you check out. You like that rhyme? Chick Picks? Oh my god, we're amazing. Um, so my first chick pick is my Extra Life page. Guys, Katrina and I were doing Extra Life. Yay! She made a little bit of a slacker I'm with sorry. the page. Um, <laughs> If you don't know what Extra Life is, Extra Life is an event held every year to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network hospitals. And if you participate, you can raise money for a hospital in your area, or you can look for people to support if you don't want to participate yourself. Basically, on a set day, everybody plays video games. They stream it for like 24 hours trying to raise money. Mm. Uh, So Katrina and I will be doing that. I think we can do it on the actual day. Yes, because it's a Saturday. I think it's like October 25th. Yeah, Extra Life takes place on a Saturday. It's the Saturday before Kamikaze. Yeah. So I I think it's October 25th. Um, Tune in to my Twitch, same place you are right now. 
Save that time. Um, and we will Save be streaming time. video games to raise money for children. Because, I mean, why not use video games to do something awesome? Yay! Finally! Who would say no to that? <laughs> Who would say no to that? Okay, what are the good pick? things? Go. Uh, my chick pick. Holy fuck, I didn't even think about this, really. Um, oh my god, I warned you. I did. Uh, you did. She warned me, and I just shook the table and everything. I'm sorry. My chick pick is New York Comic Con, because I'm going next week, and I can't wait. And I have a panel on Sunday. I'm sorry, Sarah. Sarah wanted to go, and she tried to go last minute, and it didn't work out. But next year will be really great, and we'll go together, and I'll show you around New York City. <laughs> anyway, go to New York Comic Con. On Sunday, I'm hosting a panel called Women in Geek Media that is about um, working within like different fields of geeks. So we have somebody who has done animation. We have somebody who's made games. We've had a professional cosplayer, which is something that I didn't know was a thing. Um, and then journalists uh, for different types of media on the panel and talking about like what we as women within our industry uh, have done to get to where we are, um, where we see the industry going, um, and advice for anybody who's looking to get into the industry, especially those of us who are like less likely to get jobs uh, in uh, geekdom. So yeah, check it out, uh, 415. Um, um, is that the one Holland is in? Holland is so in it, Yay! Geek and why are you be talking sorry. about me? I'm sorry. If you're Holland. a Geek and Sundry fan, Holland, one of our vloggers, is in that panel, and you should check her out, because she's like a thousand gigawatts of energy and adorable. Seriously. And she's so, so And awesome. her hair looks like a unicorn right now. Yes. Um, we're also being joined by uh, Jesse Pridemore, who is the professional... I love yeah, I love Jesse Pridemore. Um, and then Brittany is also on our panel. Um, oh. Yeah, Brittany's on our panel. And okay. then uh, Alicia Grasso, me, and Eunice Cabrera, who animated for Titmouse Studios. They're like the, they make a lot of adult swim stuff. I know, Titmouse so. Studios. Yeah, Studio Titmouse. Wow, so. y'all legit. I love we that you just decided vote. to be legit without me. What? I didn't no, know you were in. That thing, it's fine. Oh my God, Sarah. I, I couldn't plan, afford I to play this tickets. a year it's ago, fine. by the way. It's fine. Go well, before you knew me. Okay, well, that's more acceptable. <sighs> uh, so my second chick pick is, uh, oh, we have a Twitter account now for Rebel Based. Check out at Rebel Base Pod. Follow us. I couldn't fit podcast yeah. in there. Fuck you, Twitter. Rebel Base Pod. Uh, and in case you're new here, I'm at Sarah the Rebel. She's at O Katrina. With Katrina a C. has a C. Sarah has an H. If y'all don't know that, I can't help you. So yeah, Rebel Base Pod. We have a Twitter account. We tweet interesting things. We ask questions. And on the off weeks that we are not doing a podcast, because by the way, we do this podcast every other bye weekly. Yes, every We're other bye. Saturday. We're bye. <laughs> You guys have been waiting for that. <laughs> um, on the off weeks, we're going to be doing like um, Twitter chats. And so you can join in the conversation and possibly have your answers or things you've said uh, on our podcast. Yay! So join in. Um, uh, with that said, we also have a Tumblr. That's rebelbasedpodcast.tumblr.com. Uh, we mainly just reblog stuff we like there uh, and also put up our creative endeavors. So if you're interested in whatever the fuck else we're doing in life, that's probably where you want to go. Um, yeah, that was my second one. What's your third chick pick? I didn't even hear what your second one is because I was it's reading that tumbling. chat right there. What? What happened? It made me laugh really hard. Oh my god. <laughs> because no, we wouldn't. Y'all are um, ew, gross. Yeah. Oh, and my third pick was Goldie Blocks and I Am Elemental. Please go to their websites if you have uh, a young lady in your life, a niece, a daughter, whatever. Uh, buy her some cool shit instead of that whack shit you were planning to buy her. I don't care if she don't want it. Buy it for her. If you're a nerd and you have a niece, I don't care who you are, what gender you are, you, like, owe it to her to, like, at least open the door. Like, if she's not into geeky shit, whatever. But you should be, be like, so... I'm Batman. Like, I was like, hey, girls, here are Magic the Gathering starter thingies, and uh, here's a dinosaur, and uh, here's a video game. Have fun. Ooh, ooh, See you. I'll be back next Christmas. I have like a 2DS like sitting on my Amazon wish list. Wish list. Wish list. Wish list. Wish list. For That's when after, after my around. after my niece turns three, I'm just gonna get it for her. Um, because that's like, like, like the late age limit, I think. I don't know. I'm just going to get it for her anyway. Um, Do you, yellow? <clears throat> my third chick pick, I uh, I don't I don't freaking know what my third chick pick Come is. Well, you could do it. Uh, check out my blog, ohkatrina.com. I wrote some new shit this uh, week, and and there's a cool like playlist that I have to put up if you like New York City at all. But whatever. There you go. Yeah, that's my, that's my third chick pick, and I think with that, we are officially done. It's 9 o'clock on the dot. 
Thank you, assholes, for joining us. Thank you, assholes. <laughs> Thanks to you. Um, we haven't, actually, we haven't read any questions or answered any random questions that people have. Oh, okay, yeah. Which what we else? often do, so yeah. we'll leave about five minutes. I probably won't put this on the YouTube video, so mm. let's say bye first. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, hi, I've been O'Katrina. Why did you say hi? We said bye. I'm Sarah. Be sure to follow. Follow us, Tumblr, Twitter. We will see you later. Ciao.